People are always surprised when I tell them I'm an herbalist and that our business is 10 plus years old. Some will even ask outright if we actually make enough money to support ourselves. I'm not mad at them. It's fair. It's not a profession or a career that you hear people say often. Perhaps you're an aspiring herbalist and you want to know if you can make a sustainable living in this field. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the barriers that we do face as herbalists and also talk about common ways that herbalists structure their businesses. When I used to work in the arts, which is where I got my marketing and communications background, I knew it was frustrating for artists to have to split their time between their art and their gig that pays the bills. Artists want to create, not wait tables, do data entry, or work a nine to five just to stay financially afloat. I feel the same way about herbalists and healers. We want to do the work that is most meaningful to us and be financially supported in it. When we have to split our time, we're also splitting our energy. And when we're doing side work that isn't fulfilling, that's draining. And we lose the motivation to work on creating and studying and doing the healing work that's most important to us. So before we talk about ideas and structure, let's have context for why financial stability is legitimately challenging for herbalists. Here are three of the barriers we have to overcome. One, because herbalism is not a medically licensed field, there isn't structural support for us to build careers. Think about this. If you're a nurse, a teacher, a chef, or a personal trainer, you can find a job within an organization or institution. For us, that's not necessarily the case, right? Like, yes, there may be holistic organizations that you can work with as a practitioner, but those organizations and those positions are few and far between. It's not the same as being able to go on Indeed.com and type in jobs for herbalists and have, have that generate hundreds hundreds of positions for you. And two, with the lack of structural support, we don't necessarily realize that this means herbalism is entrepreneurial work. And this can be like a shocking realization because it means that we have to gain other skills in order to build our own organizations and our own structures. This means you can't just be an herbalist. You know, you have to learn business and marketing and accounting and operations and manufacturing and clinical regulations so much, depending on what you do. Three, and realizing herbalism is entrepreneurial means that building something sustainable is going to take time. It's going to take time to build that financial stability because you're building from scratch. Unlike physicians, you know, as an example, who can graduate from medical school, complete residency, then apply to work at a hospital where their patients, they're supplied. We have to build our customer base, whatever that is, from scratch. So like artists, for a period of time, you may have to straddle worlds and have a gig that pays the bills while you build your herbal practice. And if this is the case, be sure that you're gaining skills that are transferable to your business. Now let's talk about some of the common ways that herbalists structure their businesses. Here are the offerings that I have seen the most. One, private consultations, working one-on-one -on -one with clients. This has a time capacity limitation. I think seeing clients is an extremely important experience because it helps you integrate, apply, observe, and learn in an experiential way. Herbalism is not something you can simply learn through books and classes and understand without doing assessments, formulating medicine, actually seeing how a person responds to the medicine, and then making adjustments as necessary from there. The consultation process accelerates your understanding in big, big ways. But because it depends on your time, it's not sustainable in the long run as your only offer. Eventually, you'll, you'll reach a maximum limit on how many clients you can see in person, and that caps your income. Two, herbal medicine products. Be it small batch or large scale, when you're making herbal products or reselling bulk herbs even, you're in manufacturing and retail. You can have a physical storefront, a tea shop, you can have an apothecary, you can sell at local farmer's markets, and do e-commerce through your own website or a seller platform like Etsy. 
Making products accelerates your understanding of formulary and helps you know, you know when blends can be supportive for a wide range of people, maybe like with acute conditions, some of them, versus when you need something more customized, as is generally the case with chronic concerns. In either case, understand with manufacturing that you're in the game of having multiple products for people to choose from and launching new products regularly. We as herbalists understand that herbs and formulas are multi-purpose, like your first aid salve, while it helps with burns and bites and scrapes, yeah, it can also likely be used for eczema. You know this, but it's harder for consumers to understand the multifaceted nature of plant medicine. So they wanna see the product that says specifically it works on eczema, and you either have to do this in your product labeling or make something else even if it's a similar formula. Also, especially if you're doing herbal body care, think about the body care and beauty industry with all of the fragrances and all of the seasonal products that come out. Sometimes people want to know what new products you have simply because they are used to going to the store and shopping for what's new. I just wanna give you a deeper understanding of like the game that you're in. When we were doing body care, this was a dynamic that we absolutely did not like. Stores wanted to know, what new products do you have? But we had created our products to be multi-purpose and didn't think that people needed to constantly buy something new. It's just a mindset shift that most consumers and most stores don't have, so it's a consideration to think about. The limitations with products are scale and ingredient integrity. Yes, you can make more than one bottle or jar at a time, and you absolutely should, but more products you have in your line, each of those will have to be scaled, and you can either hire people to help you make your products if you're at that level. You can also outsource through contract manufacturing, which then likely means you might have to compromise on some ingredients, depending on what you make and its shelf life. Teaching, this includes sharing your skills and knowledge at conferences, doing your own classes, you know, teaching through another organization, creating online courses that are short courses and also creating long ones like mentorships and apprenticeships like our Herbal Medicine for the Soul Mentorship Program. Teaching is so valuable because it helps you synthesize and understand the nuances and hopefully try to explain them in ways that other people can understand. Teaching is not just about repeating the same information about plants that folks can learn in books and, and in courses. It's about your synthesis of this information and practice. It's about transformation that you've undergone. What have you experienced in this work? And it's about learning, like, how can you explain things that are complex and simple terms? I think teaching has the most potential for scalability because you can teach the same material to one person, then to five, then to a hundred, or move, you know, all in the same room, and that easily translates to a virtual or on-demand platform as well. Books. Package and author your work, be it through e-guides, e-books, or physical books. I think this is especially important for herbalists of color so that our voices are heard and preserved. This is an extension of teaching, of course, so again, don't just repeat information. Synthesize, draw your own conclusions, and share from your place of understanding. This is how we add value and expansion to this field. Books are a big undertaking, certainly require a lot of research and experience, so it's something that most folks don't just like come out the box of doing. You need to find your voice and wait until you have something to say, and that comes through likely all of the experiences you have with the other offerings previously mentioned. Growing herbs from small scale growers to mid-sized farmers, cultivating medicinal plants can be another arm to your business. While there are many large scale bulk herb suppliers, I think there's a growing demand for small medicinal herb farms that, that also, it also has the potential to grow into other forms of income from you pick, farm tours, fermentation and preservation classes, herbal products, and so much more. If you have a passion for growing and you have the land, I would highly suggest you grow medicinal plants that herbalists can source from you. There is so much we can do in this space. I hope you feel encouraged to pursue this field if it is your passion, if it's your calling. 
One final tip, if you want inspiration on like how to structure your business and perhaps develop more income generating streams for your own business, look to other industries. Be inspired by what they're doing. You are not limited to these structures. People make plant dyes and herbal art. They specialize in crafting food that features medicinal plants, do summits, make films about herbal medicine, write children's books. There's no limit to what you can do if you think outside of the box and just keep going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments if there's a structure or an idea that you've seen in this space that's unique. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell. See you next time.